Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you can hear me well. Uh, I don't see many of you, but I feel you are uh, close to me. Uh, I'm very pleased to be with you today, and I would like to commend the International Peace Diplomacy Corps under the leadership of its chairman, Mr. Rion del Rosario, for organizing this program and for the very many important initiatives which he has promoted, and I am aware of them. I loved the brief introduction of our Czech friend, Mr. David Ulver. I can't promise to be as brief as he was, but I can subscribe to every word that he said. Thank you. I understand that most of the participants are from Cebu or the Visayan region. And this gives me a particular pleasure because I feel like I'm visiting virtually Cebu all over again. One of my most memorable visits in the Philippines was in November last year in Cebu, um, the city where we have an extraordinary honorary consul, Mr. Grand Benedicto. Hopefully some of you know him, a very successful businessman and somebody who is really devoted to his city, to his region, and to promote the relationships, international relations between Cebu and the rest of the world. Um, when I was in Cebu, please allow me to reminisce, reminisce a little bit because it was one of my best visits and I love to do this. When I was in Cebu, I had the pleasure of meeting the, the mayors of Cebu, Mandawe, and Lapu Lapu. And uh, I visited several uh, places, several companies, for instance, Prod Food, which is a great pride for the Philippines, one of the, the exporting, the leading exporting companies. Uh, and I hope they will begin to export in Romania as well their wonderful products. I met the European Chamber of Commerce uh, of the Philippines, the Cebu chapter, and I know they are extremely active. And I believe at some point in the future, you as uh, young business people, some of you will join the European Chamber of uh, Commerce. I learned a lot about the Cebu-based companies, both the large ones and the small ones, both foreign companies. You've got among us others, Mercedes there and many others, and the indigenous companies, which are no less impressive. The Mandawe mayor and the city council, they knew so much about Romania because there is an ongoing twinning between the city of Mandawe and a beautiful city in Romania, Baku. I'm actually working with uh, the two cities to try to revitalize and consolidate their relationship. So here comes the first idea that I would like you to discuss and maybe to remember. Um, your roots, our roots are important. Because you are young, you'll have the opportunity to travel, to visit any country you will want to visit around the world. You may want to continue your studies in Europe or in Manila or in the US, but you will forever be a Cebuano. Your roots are important. You have a thousand reasons to be proud of Cebu. And Cebu is such a dynamic city, in such a dynamic region. And I am one of those who believe in the future of your, your region. And of course, you will always be an ambassador of Cebu. You don't need anybody to appoint you as such. 
but honoring your roots, honoring your childhood, youth, years spent in your province will mean honoring who you are. So congratulations for being Cebuanos. <laughs> and this leads me to the main topic, which is the role of youth in a society, in any society. It is clear that the youth, you, with your energy, with your creativity, with your innovative mindset, you play a significant role in a democracy, in the economic development, in the peace and nation building of a country. You are the future. It's commonplace, but it's quite true. The participation of youth in the democratic process is an, of utmost importance for any country. I am very pleased to have witnessed last year the enthusiasm and dynamism of the Filo Filipino youth in voicing out their concerns, their beliefs, their aspirations, their ideas, particularly in the run up to the uh, parliamentary and presidential elections. I understand that 50% of the votes cast belonged to the youth. I can only say hats off. A politically active youth is a guarantee for a better future for any country. Now, I also know that throughout the history of the Philippines, which is one of Asia's oldest democracy, a consolidated democracy. The resilience of generations of Filipino youth have been instrumental in advancing through critical moments and struggles in the past. And I can never forget that Rizal was himself and remains forever a young hero. And he's not only Philippines young hero, he's a hero for the world. I was planning to show you the Romanian version of Noli Me Tangere. I think I may not have it. Oh yes, I do. I'll show it to you in the Q&A session if you are interested. Similarly, the use of Romania has played a significant role in fostering change throughout Romania's history. As you may be aware, my country used to be part of the communist bloc that was long before you were born. It was a time when the world was divided in the free world to which you belonged and the communist bloc. At the time, actually, my country was a dictatorship. I still have to see up to this day a communist country that is not a dictatorship. For me and for many others who lived through the difficult years before 1989, communism equalizes, equates. Communism is synonymous with dictatorship. The so-called communism suppresses dissent, Defaults the freedom of expression and ends up in being more than an ideology, in being the structure on it which a dictatorship is being built. This happened in Romania. This happened in the former Soviet Union, in many countries in Eastern and Central Europe. For you, it's history for me and my generation. It's um, contemporary history. Romania had a revolution in 1989 overthrowing the communist regime. It was December 1989. The oldest amongst you might, might remember the, the horrible images uh, of the revolution, which unfortunately was a bloody one. Uh, the youth 
1989, the youth of Romania were at the forefront of the Romanian revolution. Some of the young, courageous Romanians who led the revolt even gave their supreme sacrifice. Due to them, we are now a free, democratic, prosperous nation, moderately prosperous, but we are free and democratic. Due to the youth who rose up against the communist regime, we can now bring up our children in liberty. Due to them, we are now quite proudly members of the European Union and the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Our young heroes of the Romanian revolution were people like many of you, students worrying about exams, worrying about their first love. That is, they were ordinary citizens, but they had extraordinary ideals. And each of us, you in particular, you need to have ideals. Do not imagine that, that heroes are made from a different fabric than the rest of us. They are just people like us who lived through extraordinary circumstances and had the opportunity to show to the world their values and their characters. So, so much about history, but I'm getting to another idea, which I hope we can discuss in any society. And we are not speaking about revolutions any longer. In any society, youth are the agents of change. Youth is the, the agent of normal progressive change which is a precondition for the evolution of any society, the Philippine one and the Romanian one included. You know, we the elderly, we are set in our ways while we admit that the youth have the energy and enthusiasm to imagine a better future. This is where I see your role to be agents of change and to be a force for good in the Philippines. My humble advice for what it's worth is act instead of complaining. Do something about the things that you don't like. Do not limit yourself to deploring what you don't like. Act, act now, find a way to be active, to change things. It can be only planning to change for the better your surroundings, your environment, your circle of friends or your family. But change can only come from you, from the young generation or mostly from you, from the young generation. The good news is that individually and collectively, you do have the power to change things for the better. I will give you two examples going back to Romania again, um, to show you how we support and promote the youth as agents of change in my own house in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Romania. Just yesterday, the foreign minister of Romania, who is himself a relatively young um, career diplomat, gave out the awards of a contest called Young Ambassadors of Romania. The target audience was people like you, students, very young people who were invited to submit a brief about the history of relations between Romania and UNESCO, an international organization that takes care of our common cultural and immaterial heritage. You probably know that you have, I think around nine UNESCO heritage monuments in the Philippines. 
and I'm on my way uh, to visiting each of them because they are part of the international shared heritage that we share and we praise. Anyway, so yesterday awards were being given out by our young foreign minister to three very young people who were the authors of the best reports about the history of cooperation between Romania and UNESCO. And next year, I hope the topic will be related to the Indo-Pacific relations between Romania and Indo-Pacific, or maybe even relations between Romania and the Philippines, because they have been very rich and they are growing and consolidating. Also, uh, a few days ago, a new generation of 90, 90 uh, new diplomats took their oath in the foreign ministry of Romania in front of the head of the Romanian diplomacy as new recruits. Their average is 31 years old, which is impressive. So we are speaking about 90 people who are, are on average 31 years old. They have reached the end of a very long process, a one year long process of selecting the brightest and the best to become diplomats in the service of Romania. But you know, the same thing happens all over the world. It's not Romania only, or the Czech Republic, or um, all foreign ministries need new blood. All foreign ministries need young people with a different perspective, a fresher pers perspective, and a new type of knowledge, new kinds of knowledge. And frankly, not only in diplomacy, but in every profession nowadays, in the government, in businesses, we all try to make sure that youth are included, youth is included, that the youth is represented, is listened to, and is being promoted. And I'm glad to see that this happens in the Philippines as well. And one of the most active secretaries that you have, in my own opinion, the tourism, uh, tourism secretary, Cristina Garcia Frasco, comes exactly from uh, Cebu or from Visayas. And she's only around 40. I've listened to her, I spoke to with her, and she's frankly impressive. She is the living proof, proof that yes, we can, yes, you, the youth, you can get to the highest uh, office. Similarly, in Romania, we have a minister for the digital, the minister for the digital economy, who is 38 years old. And it makes sense because when we speak about digital, nobody is better than the young people. I myself in the office, I very much trust my youngest colleagues to teach me how to do this and that. And, uh, uh, you know, digital is not natural for somebody who was not born in the digital age. Um, the European Union itself has countless programs aimed at supporting the young people. Last year, it was the European Year of Youth. And if you Google it, you'll see that in every EU, European Union member state, there were a lot of initiatives being launched, pro uh, projects being up accomplished. And what the European Union does does not stay within the frontiers of the European Union. Last year, a great boost was given to programs such as uh, Erasmus+, Plus, which offers scholarships in the European Union to students and people like you from what we call third countries, countries that are not members of the European Union. 
Going back to Romania, there are many other initiatives in Romania. I'll list a few. They are all meant to include the young people in the decision-making process. Um, we have an association, Volunteers for Ideas and Projects, which is run by the young people and is an interlocutor for the prime minister, the government, and the ministers. We have the Young Ambassadors Forum. We have, of course, the youth delegation to the United Nations. And there is one, of course, in the Philippines. And I know it has been very active. I'm getting to the end of my, of my uh, remarks. I would like to say that there is another in, important topic to discuss, namely the role that the intergenerational harmony plays. I myself, I, I find the traditional Filipino culture to be very healthy, to be something to be cherished and preserved. I understand that in the traditional Filipino households, uh, we learn a lot from our lolas. We are always close together, different generations. This is what we try to achieve all over the world in our companies, businesses, organizations. In every team, we need to have as many generations represented as humanly possible. Nowadays, hierarchical organizations, you know, the ones that are like a pyramid, are being replaced by horizontal structures, by networking type organizations. And we are leaving behind the model when, you know, the oldest and the wisest was on top, and the young people had to climb the ranks of the ladder to maybe one day when they are very old to get to the top. No. I think all over the world, a more egalitarian society is being built uh, all around us. But for this to succeed, we need to take care of all generations and we need to make sure that there is a healthy, continuous, active, intergenerational dialogue and not touch with a war of generations. Finally, and really and now I'm close to concluding, I cannot end these brief remarks without saying something about education. It doesn't concern you because you are mostly young. It concerns all generations. I know that some of you may not like school very much. At times, I didn't like school very much. Some schools are not much to be liked. But life itself is nothing but a continuous uh, school. Uh, you have to be prepared for a lifelong of learning and you have to look forward to it. Nothing is being achieved unless you learn continuously. And when you stop learning, frankly, your active life stops. You become like a creature of habit, like a robot programmed to do the same things over and over again, um, a creature of routine. So, Please be prepared to learn all your life, uh, to learn alone, not necessarily from handbooks or from school. There's nowadays so much information. Verify, try to learn from your peers, try to learn from the elderly, try to learn every day something new. You have to absorb knowledge. That's what we all do. And to help others with your knowledge. I will conclude here. Hope <music>